Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe, with episode number 37 of my Italy's Holocaust, looking at the films in the years before 79, after 94. But here in this episode, obviously, we're looking at a film from uh, the great Mario Bava from 1966. His interesting title, Kill Baby Kill, which makes... It really does make sense in light of the ending, which I don't think I'm really going to get into much. Um, I want to leave a lot of the spoiler, leave a lot of it spoiler free, I think, or at least attemptively so. This is one of those titles that, unlike a lot of titles that I've already covered, uh, probably has, it could very well not have been seen. It's easily to have gone under in light of his, the rest of his work when you consider Black Sunday and Bay of Blood and, um, uh, uh, other pieces of work that he has done on um, Planet of the Vampires. Uh, Mario Bava to Italy, man, was, uh, he was just a hallmark of just the achievement that he had as a director and and, and his, his father in his own right and his son, Lombardo, right, um, will go on and have his own uh, career. Uh, Demons may be the, the benchmark of it all, I think. Um, anyway, so... Kill Baby Kill. Um, this, you know, the first time I watched this movie, I wasn't sure what to make out of it. And then I, I just, I kind of went off. And the other morning, I was able to, um, I was able to put it on quite early in the morning, which I have found, uh, you know, get the coffee rolling. And if I can put a movie in um, and, and not be disturbed, you know, in the uh, 5, 5.30 in the morning, 6 in the morning uh, time, I find I take in, I take in films the, the best. And this second, I've only seen this movie twice, I think. The second one was in the early morning uh, with my coffee. And I'm telling you, I thoroughly, absolutely enjoyed this movie uh, in ways that just, I think, escaped me the first time. I'm not sure why um i'm not sure but uh the uh you've got um rinaldi um uh, well let me just start let's uh, i'm just thinking of the cinematography and the music um there's so much of this movie but let me let me just start here uh maybe this could uh help my own thoughts a little bit uh a doctor uh who s way um played by um uh Giacomo Ross Stewart, um, his freaking awesome character, um, interesting character. A doctor arrives at a remote village to perform an autopsy on a young woman, but his efforts are frustrated by the superstitious townspeople who live in fear of the murder or spirit of a ghastly child. Uh, Dr. Esway exposes the barbaric rituals of a frightened villagers only to discover something even more horrifying within the crumbling remains of a notorious villa grop. Uh, made at the peak of his career, Kill Baby Kill is among Bob's most macabre and visually stylish works, uh, ranking alongside his legendary Euro, Euro Gothic thrillers, uh, Black Sunday and The Whip of the Body. Um, it is, it is, it is a fantastic gothic piece with a bit of a gialli title, which does make sense by the time you get to the end and you sort of kind of see what's been happening um it doesn't lose its supernatural um mark on the film uh it is very atmospheric uh and to put the movie on like this in the early morning uh in the early morning hours before well we're in winter time right so before the sun has really come up and cast its light into your house um and to have every all the lights off and, and, the, and the sound up well enough this this is this is one of the most beautiful, stylish, um, atmospheric, moody. The set pieces here are, are, are some of the, are some of the best um, I might have ever seen. Uh, now it was a lower budget film, more uh, independently made. Um, did not receive as much attention as his earlier work. And yet, um, the film would go on and be really a benchmark for him uh, in his career. Um, I know, I know, many think this might 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 have been some think this might have been his 
best achievement, although I, you know, it's kind of hard to argue against Black Sunday. But what this what this does is is to take this sort of the the Euro Gothic uh, to and really perfect it. Um, it's basically inherently a, a ghost story, and it, it sort of reminds you. It's funny how. It's funny how movies later on, you know, I was just thinking Sleepy Hollow came into my mind. Sort of same sort of idea going on here, right? With Johnny Depp's character comes in, he's he's called in to investigate, uh, do autopsies, which really go against the grain uh, of the mentality of the townspeople. And yet there is something very supernatural happening, which, uh, which um, Johnny Depp's character... Um, uh, yeah, I don't know why it's escaping my mind. Um, Ichabod Crane's character um, uh, it has his scientific mind, his reasoned mind, has to fight against the superstition, only to find out ultimately in the end there is a soup, there is uh, there is validness to the superstition uh, that has engulfed this this people in this small town, and uh, and so, but I think it was. Uh, really done well extremely well here this idea where this guy gets called in and the inspector sort of just briefs him on there's been a series of murders and the townspeople are really freaked out and they think this goes back to a little girl that was uh was uh, murdered 20 years beforehand and, and it's just a terrible uh avoidable accident and so the people think uh this town they really do believe that this the ghost of this little girl melissa is basically just hunting down people in the town um taking them out one by one and there there's other elements in here too uh lucio fulci i think i think held this movie in pretty high regard because there's moments with melissa the ghost when when she is um causing um <laughs> a terrible accident to uh to happen with uh with one of the townspeople there's this it will be very clearly, uh, you know, more seen with Fulci, uh, City of the Living Dead. I, I made me think about just the, with the priest, um, and the, the close up of the eyes and the hypnotic, um, uh, trance that this ghostly character will, will just evoke in the victim and cause the victim. Like we see in the opening frames of the film, this girl is, uh, we don't know why or what's causing it, but we just know that she has somehow been pushed uh, to her death, uh, being impaled on these, on these, on these pikes of this fence, uh, which is a uh, pretty, pretty graphic for 1966. Um, but there's this, this quality inherent there that I think Fulci will really pick up on with City of the Living Dead and, uh, you know, the famous gut spewing scene and just the the control of the eyes. There's something about just having that hypnotic stare and causing someone to do harm to themselves is pretty, pretty scary when done right. And it, and it is done so eerily well in here. And you've got uh, you've got the uh, creepy villa. You've got uh, you're not sure who ultimately uh, like a Gialli. Uh, you're stretching your mind as to. Is it really just the work of this ghastly uh, girl come back from the grave or huh, like Sleepy Hollow? Is there something else at work here? Um, and it, it is, it's, it's a, it is just, I don't know why this movie did not hit me the way it hit me the other morning, the first time I watched it. Um, but it, it just hit me on a weird level. And I, I just, and it, it, here's the big thing I want to get into real quick. It, you know, a lot of people say that Friday the 13th stands upon the shoulders of Bay of Blood, uh, much like um, Alien stands on the shoulders of Planet of the Vampires. Uh, but I, I think as true as that is, I think Friday the 13th owes itself to not only Bay of Blood, but Kill Baby Kill. Th there are essential ingredients to both of these films that are found to some degree, or more or less, are found in the original Friday the 13th, which unfortunately, in a way, was a happy accident because as well as we've heard a million times, um, the sequel was never really implanted in the beginning. It just sort of was a happy accident. Um, Friday the 13th was such a hit and they decided, well, where do we go? Well, let's go in a direction that quite frankly did not make sense to a lot of people who were part of Friday the 13th. 
but it does make absolute sense when you consider kill baby kill and you consider of course bay of blood and you consider the ultimate end of this film and you and you think about what was missed with friday the 13th that could have played a major role in the rest of the fan franchise i think what friday the 13th missed was was is as well as it tried to stand on the shoulders of bava it it sort of missed what bava did to a degree maybe more so than not but it was still yet a huge success which built an incredible franchise which you know sort of like the old universal days you know it's 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 a monster franchise jason Voorhees is a monster but the end of friday the 13th of course we we there there is a lot of things that are laid out on the table as much as they are here that beg the question how much did they think about this and it's too bad that they decided to leave some of this on the table and not just integrate it into a script in ways that could have made it could have the first Friday 13th, 13th could have invoked a little bit more of the supernatural without necessarily being a supernatural film but but by implication they could have done something that could have made that an even darker more mysterious that could have made an easier segue from the first to the second film and of course the rest as an easy explanation of what is sort of going on here so i find, i just find the whole friday the 13th phenomena interesting in light of kill baby kill um which is also i think known as operation fear which is sort of i don't know weird when you know the film you kind of get the title in a way uh curse of the living dead i think is another um the cinematography in this movie is on freaking real um rest of Chelly's music um hope i'm not getting the two mixed up um just uh, it's this film's amazing man and we'll probably never completely understand just how, how much of its legacy is being felt in film um somewhat close to it and even you know further further away i mean i'm just thinking i and you know i invoke sleepy hollow fulci city um friday the 13th and that whole legacy uh and i think it's it's funny i i imagine there was a day when you had a lot of these directors in the early days at say usc or wherever they were uh in their film classes probably watching a lot of old italian films thinking thinking probably out loud it's really too bad most Americans will never see these films, but here we are seeing them, and man, are they a treasure trove of ideas. Well, now we know where a lot of their ideas, a lot of their ideas, which is so funny because Italy gets, you know, laughed at a lot for all of its pseudo copying, and yet we have done, we have done the same to a degree, and we'll probably never know just how much, um, we have looked to Italy as a source of inspiration, especially in the early days, uh, in the early days of horror. Now that, of course, with the video uh, revolution and uh, the, the advent of uh, the VHS tape and, uh, you know, people's homes and our ability to view film uh, that, uh, quite frankly, when I was a young kid in the 70s, uh, unless you were at a drive-in theater, you probably weren't seeing an Italian film or, or other uh, independent minded films um or of course you know 42nd street right or or other places like that um but now we can and now we can look at this stuff and think to ourselves when we think about other movies and go dang there's uh there's some interesting similarities there um it makes you wonder well if you're gonna if you're gonna take from the treasure trove of anyone baba is uh is a, is an easy go-to all right um or or a lot of the margarati um right in fact it's funny i you know christmas present uh finally got this one and this will definitely be reviewed on my italy's holocaust because of what margarati uh in his own way meant to uh uh italy's uh film industry um filmmaking but so i'm just gonna cut it here um this is a remarkable achievement it's an awesome ghost story um 
it uh, it's it's resolution in the end might not be as tight uh, as much of the film uh, is, uh, but it is uh, it is it is an interesting it is an interesting film. It is beautiful, so beautiful to look at uh, and listen to, uh, and just to see uh, the good doctor here, Esway, just to see how he combats and must. Oh, oh and I almost forgot. There's a scene where Esway's in the villa and he's uh, going. Uh, he hears uh, his um, uh, the girl that's uh, his um, uh, that's sent to help him with the initial autopsy. Um, uh, is it is it Monica? I can't remember. But um, she uh, she's somewhere in the villa and he can't hear. He he hears her scream. He go, he goes and it's one of those deals where he goes from one room and can't escape that room as he goes through a door, another door and he's in the same room. And it made me remember, it made me think about, um, uh, was it, um, the, the ghost of Christmas past, the uh, X-Files Christmas episode. There was an exact scene, uh, just like that. It makes you wonder how much Chris Carter was also influenced by Mauro Bava's work. And I just thought of that just now. And so there is uh, so much, in films like this, uh, and Kino did an absolutely fabulous job uh, with its transfer. There's a great commentary on here with uh, Lucas, Tim Lucas, um, TV spots and some stuff. Um, this was uh, it's uh, re newly restored in 2K from the 35 millimeter element. It looks great. It, lo it looks great, especially when you put this in your uh, you know your uh, 4K player, 4K TV. There's that upscale effect. It probably looks even a little bit better than it would in just a normal setup, right? So anyways, uh, here at Italy's Holocaust in the years well before 79, uh, just a little look at um, a seminal achievement by Mario Bava, perhaps the godfather of all godfathers of Italian filmmaking. Uh, just an absolute spook fest, just a, such an awesome movie. Uh, definitely, if you never checked it out, definitely check it out. And uh, I'm sure you could get the uh, Kino release uh, at a very reasonable price definitely worth picking up especially if you're a fan of uh italian films as always as always we end these things off with go bills this is not a dream not a dream we might be useful to